Hey there, I'm going to be speaking about seven foods that help boost your immune system. It's important to have healthy immune systems so that we can uh, fight off infections and disease. So I'm going to be telling you more about my seven favorite foods that I love that boost the immune system. So let's get started. These are my top seven favorites. The first two are lemon and ginger. You may wonder why I have grouped these two foods together. Well, because they give many similar benefits, like they both help keep colds and flu at bay. Ginger also soothes sore throats, encourages coughing to remove mucus from the chest. They both have anti-inflammatory properties and the anti-inflammatory chemicals in ginger stimulate blood circulation and opens the sinuses. Lemon contains vitamin C, an antioxidant, which helps fight damage from free radicals and protects cells from oxidative stress, therefore strengthening the immune system. When I wake up in the mornings, the first thing I do is squeeze some fresh lemon into a lukewarm glass of water and drink that. This helps with digestion throughout the day as well as detox the body. You can also add lemon juice and ginger to black tea as an extra detox drink. Or you can make ginger water to use for any tea throughout the day by boiling a piece of fresh ginger root in a pot of water for about 5 minutes. Use the water for whatever tea you may enjoy throughout the day. Regarding vitamin C, your body does not store vitamin C, so having it throughout the day in small amounts will increase the absorption. People who take large quantities of vitamin C at once, particularly in supplement form, are losing most of it, so take it in smaller doses more frequently in order to enjoy more of the benefits. When squeezing lemons, I don't throw away the peels, I actually use them. I remove the pips, I cut off the ends and I place into a food processor until finely ground. Then I place the peels into a glass jar with some apple cider vinegar to keep it fresh and place it in the fridge. I do the same with ginger. I use fresh ginger, I don't peel it, I just wash it and roughly chop and add to the blender. You can store this lemon and ginger mix for about two months in the fridge and just use it whenever you need it. For example, you can use it in salads or smoothies or yogurt um, or add to finished stews or chicken dishes. You can also add to a jug of water for lemon or ginger flavored water and keep it in the fridge. There are some precautions. If you are drinking quite a bit of lemon water, I always use a straw because lemon does contain acids that can erode away at teeth enamel. Ginger, if you have too much ginger, people who are on medications for high blood pressure or diabetes should be cautious as ginger may lower blood sugar and increase insulin levels. People with a blood disorder need to be careful with too much ginger which can increase bleeding. Garlic is a natural immune booster due to its antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties. I use garlic in just about everything every day. I'm kind of lost without it. You can also ingest raw garlic crushed or mix it with a little bit of olive oil before ingesting as it can burn your stomach. Or if you don't want to mix it with olive oil, you could take it in very small quantities at a time. Because of its healing and sulfur properties, you can also crush it and use it on skin irritations like boils. Garlic is also a really good prebiotic, so it feeds good bacteria in the gut. When cooking with garlic, it's important to wait at least about 10 minutes after crushing to allow the compounds to fully develop and use within an hour as the compounds are not as effective after an hour. Only use fresh crushed garlic daily. Do not store it and don't buy bought crushed garlic or garlic capsules which have lost most of their benefits. And also be careful of preservatives which are found in a lot of bought crushed garlic. Precautions, well there are some people who are allergic, so obviously these people will not be able to consume garlic. Turmeric contains a compound called curcumin, which helps fight infections. It also helps maintain a healthy digestive tract and reduces swelling and inflammation, which can lead to many diseases like cancers, arthritis, allergies or irritable bowel. There are so many ways you can use turmeric in cooking, in smoothies, yogurt, in hot or cold drinks. You can also make a turmeric paste and keep it in the fridge for about four weeks and use as needed. This is my turmeric paste that I make. And you can use this ready-made paste in many different ways. Just remember that the absorption of turmeric is improved by cooking the paste 
and by adding oil and black pepper. It's less effective without the oil and the pepper. And you can add this to, um, to make a delicious turmeric tea latte. You can add different flavorings like vanilla essence or cinnamon or ginger or cocoa. Um, and just experiment and make the perfect drink that you enjoy. The absorption, as I've said before, the absorption of turmeric is improved by cooking the paste as well as adding oil and pepper. You can also use turmeric root. Uh, most health stores will sell fresh turmeric root. I'd advise taking turmeric in small doses more often. About a quarter to half a teaspoon, two to three times daily, will be much more beneficial for you as turmeric does not stay in the body for long, about six to eight hours. So if you take in large quantities and it will just be eliminated and a waste of some really good benefits. Precautions in pregnant women, as well as people with gallstones or kidney stones, should check with their doctor before using turmeric. Because turmeric contains oxalates, um, high oxalates can increase the prevalence of kidney stones. Coconut oil contains lauric acid, which is known to reduce candida and fight bacteria. Because coconut oil is antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral, it's a wonder food and medicine that when used daily will enhance overall immunity. You can add it to hot drinks like coffee, tea, lattes, or smoothies, or use for frying and cooking. There are actually over 1,500 studies on coconut oil and its benefits to health. It is said that coconut oil is one of the healthiest foods on the planet. That's why coconut oil deserves an entire video on its own. So stay tuned for a more detailed video on all the amazing health benefits of coconut oil. Apple cider vinegar contains antioxidants which fight off infections in the body. It also contains acids which bind to toxins and help the liver eliminate them more effectively. So it helps with body detox by breaking up mucus throughout the body and cleansing the lymph nodes which allows for better lymph circulation. Only buy unpasteurized, unrefined apple cider which contains the mother, which is cloudy looking, as opposed to buying the pasteurized, refined apple ciders that don't contain the mother and is more clear looking. When I feel a little bit fatigued, I add about two teaspoons to a glass of water and drink that and it's really amazing how much more energetic I feel. The only precaution I would say is when you do drink apple cider vinegar, make sure you drink it through a straw because it does contain acids that can erode the teeth. There are no real precautions to apple cider vinegar. Because it may lower blood sugar levels in people with diabetes, therefore blood sugar levels need to be monitored closely, particularly when people with diabetes are on medications. Fermented foods um, have a powerful effect on your immune system as they act like probiotics and feed the good bacteria in your gut, which helps to keep away pathogens and increases the production of antibodies. I really love fermented foods like sauerkraut, pickles, kefir, kimchi, olives or yogurt. Just make sure that there are no added sugars in these foods as the sugars will decrease the probiotic benefits. Make sure you buy all fermented food that needs to be stored in the fridge as these will contain live and active cultures. Shelf bought sauerkraut has been pasteurized so many of the probiotics will not be as effective and you just end up throwing away your money. Make sure you read the ingredients and make sure there are no added preservatives or chemicals as this will kill off many of the good microbes. And of course you can also make your own. Just a word of caution, uh, kombucha which is a fermented drink can make candida overgrowth worse as it contains wild strains of yeast and will challenge the immune system. So just be cautious of drinking kombucha. I wouldn't have kombucha if you do have a candida problem. Bone broth, this is an amazing food. Um, the gelatin in bone broth heals the gut by promoting the growth of good bacteria. Because inflammation starts in the gut and toxins, antibiotic use, stress or poor diet will cause your gut bacteria to be out of balance. And when there are more bad bugs than good bugs, this affects everything from your metabolism, which then means weight loss, to your immune function. It also contains an amino acid called glycine which has anti-inflammatory properties. Because 80% of your immune system is in the gut, it's so important to keep the good bugs happy so you can experience better immunity. 
It also helps clean out toxins in the body as glycine, which is a building block of glutathione, which is a powerful detoxifying agent, will lower oxidative stress and helps with the elimination of heavy metals like mercury and lead. Glycine also makes you sleep better. So what you could do is try a cup of bone broth before bed and see if that makes a difference to your sleep. There are many more benefits to bone broth than just helping with immunity, which I will also speak about in another video. Make your own bone broth. It's way more nutritious and free of added preservatives. A good broth should have the consistency of jelly or gelatine. Any store-bought bone broth that is very liquid and not gelatinized will not have all the benefits and many will also contain MSG. Stay tuned as I will also be showing you how to make a good quality bone broth in a future video. I'm not sure if there are any side effects to bone broth. Um, but perhaps you could comment below and tell me if you have had any negative effects from bone broth or better still share any of the positive results you have experienced. And this brings me to the end of my top favorite immune boosting foods. Stay tuned because I'll be showing you how to make a really good homemade bone broth. So subscribe so you don't miss out on this next video. And, um, and that's all from me. Until next time, yours to a healthier lifestyle.